This morning, joining me on the phone is David Nassau. He is the author of The Patriarch, The Remarkable Life and Turbulent Times of Joseph Kennedy. Good morning, David. How are you? Good morning. Glad to be here. Well, first, I've been do doing some reading about the book, and the first thing I want to ask you is, how did this come about? Well, this, this came about um, by, I got a got at a party somewhere or at some reception, Gene Kennedy Smith told me the family wanted to, me to do a biography. I had met her on a couple of other occasions. And I said, well, I can't. I'm working on a, you know, another book. She said, when can we talk? I said, well, maybe six months, six months to the day. I got a call from Senator Kennedy, went to Washington to talk to him. And we spent a wonderful afternoon in which I said over and over again, you don't want me to do this book. I'm going to find dirt. I'm going to find something the family doesn't like. And who knows, by the time the book is published, there may be another Kennedy running for office. Indeed, there was. The week before the book was published, Joseph P. Can Joseph P. Kennedy III ran for and was elected to Congress. Senator Kennedy said to me, all the dirt is out there with lots of rumors and innuendo and scandal, and we'll take the risk, the family. We want a full biography by a historian who has no axe to grind. Now, they and clearly had you in mind. Can you tell me, why do you think that they chose you and really wanted you to do that? I think for two reasons. Um, I think the main reason was that they, someone in the family or someone who worked for the family had read my William Randolph Hearst biography. And William Randolph Hearst was a real scoundrel. And I had, I guess they thought, done a fair job on representing the man in his historical context, warts and all. I mean, he wasn't a total scoundrel, and I let it be known, you know, where I thought he erred. I think that was the first thing. The second thing was that I was a colleague of Arthur Schlesinger, and Arthur Schlesinger um, probably said to them, talk to David or look at David's work. You know, and we'll take it from there. Well, let me ask you this. When you agreed to write the biography, one of the things that they gave you access to that I don't think anyone else has had access to in the past was the um, unrestricted access to the Joseph P. Kennedy papers in the JFK mm -hmm. Presidential Library. Um, did it take... So you some convincing to get that access? Well, when, when we had the conversation, I said to Senator Kennedy, I said, look, he said, we want you to go ahead. I said, okay, I'll do it, but here are my conditions. I said, I'm not going to spend, um, you know, I'm too old. I've done this for too long. I'm not going to spend five, six years on a book um, only to have the threat of censorship hanging over me. I said, if I do this, I want an agreement in advance that you will only see the book when it's published and that you will open up all the materials in the Kennedy Library to you, to me, to me, so I can use them. And he said, fine. Um, it then took a year and a half of further negotiation before the entire family signed off on this. So I wasn't going to do the book unless they opened all that material up. And... You know, when they opened it up, it was, it was remarkable. I mean, the stuff I found that no one had seen, I mean, letters to family, letters to friends, letters to, you know, presidents, and uh, Winston Churchill, and I mean, every bold-faced name in Hollywood and New York and Boston and Hyannis and London, um, there were letters to and from him. I found all the medical records for the entire family. I found all the stock exchange transactions. I found all these records about Kennedy's time in uh, Hollywood. Now, when putting the, all of this information together for the biography, did you feel a little pressure hanging over you and, and worry about what they might think of what you ended up writing? No, not for a minute. I had my agreement, and I had made it abundantly clear to them what the risks were. Um, and I felt 
and I had made it abundantly clear to them that I was a histor- historian, first, last, and always, and I would write what I thought was significant. So no, I didn't worry about it. Of course, you know, on a personal level, I'm not a bad guy and a mean guy, and I didn't want to hurt the family. But my responsibilities as a historian uh, to my craft and my responsibilities to my readers far outweighed any personal problems I thought I might have in revealing things that the family didn't want to hear or know about. Well, for individuals wanting to maybe pick up a copy of The Patriarch, tell me what sets your biography apart from maybe some other biographies of the Kennedy family? Well, I think what sets my biography apart is that I'm a, you know, I'm a historian. This is all I do, and this is what I do. And I scoured not only all the material in the Kennedy Library, but I got material from Jerusalem and London and Berlin and Washington, and I had material that no uh, biographer has ever had before. Plus, I had all the material on how Kennedy made his, his fortune, and that was carefully guarded. And I had all these extraordinary letters to his friends overseas in which he talked about his fears and his hopes and his worries and his, you know, his fears that Jack wasn't strong enough to run for president or his talk about Rosemary and about his hopes and dreams for himself and the rest of the family. What was the most surprising thing you learned during your research? I think the most surprising thing I learned was how much Joseph Kennedy held on to his isolationist appeaser beliefs, not only during World War II, but afterwards. He was convinced, and you know, absolutely convinced, and no one was going to argue with him, that war was bad for America, and that America had oceans protecting it from Asia and Europe, and we should mind our own business. And he believed that we should not only not get into World War II, but that we should not get into a Cold War with the Soviet Union. He was against the Korean War. He was against NATO. He was against America giving any money to the French to fight in Vietnam. He was against sending a single soldier to Europe after World War II during the Cold War. So I think that was a little surprising. And it sounds like it's truly uh, an in-depth look at uh, Joseph Kennedy, whereas maybe some other not, um, books about the Kennedys may not look specifically into his life and delving so deep into his personal life. But before, we're running out of time, but before we also want to talk about, you're actually going to be in Hyannis next week um, at the JFK Library. Yes. Yes, I will be giving a, there'll be, there's a reception, and I will be talking about the book that's on Wednesday at the JFK Museum. It's from 5.30 to 7.30, and you can get tickets by going online, jfkhyannismuseum.org, and then I will be back on Thursday morning, a week from, on the 25th, and at 10 o'clock in the morning to talk to people and to sign books. So I hope to see lots of people there. Well, great. Thank you so much for taking the time to tell us about your new book, The Patriarch, and uh, we look forward to seeing you. My pleasure. Thank you. Have a good one. Okay, bye now.